the law Swedish waters, you have to be proud that you have such an MEP like uh, Amelia Anders' daughter. We are working together on digital rights and trying to be helpful for everybody using internet. Eva Lukalvin is a champion of digital rights in the European Union. Här sitter min assistent och tittar på Youtube. <laughs> oh ja, det är Eva vi har halva tiden på jobbet. Till exempel det här. The issue of regulating unauthorized access to SWE of course is technically new. What actually happened was that the Council of Ministers and the Commission made this regulation already back in 2005 and the only reason it's become an issue again is because we're pushing it through the Parliament since the European Union now needs to be democratic and that means the European Parliament needs to have a say. Jo, jag är kanslichef på Amelia Andersdottens kontor här i Bryssel. Det betyder att jag är mellanchef, mellan henne och övrig personal ansvarar för att se till att kontoret fungerar. Allt spännande pappersarbete och även arbetsledning av personalen här. Och jag är hennes politiska assistent. Well, I'm following the political files uh, we are working on, in particular in the um, industry uh, committee. Det finns nog ingen normal arbetsdag. Um, jag tror att alla dagar är, är olika. Um, ibland börjar man tidigt med frukostmöten. Uh, det innebär vanligtvis att man får någonting att äta, kanske lite kaffe, samtidigt som man lyssnar på människor som pratar om saker som intresserar dem. Man kommer hit hyfsat tidigt, läser en oändlig mängd mejl som kommit sedan dagen innan. I start by trying to read all my emails. <laughs> Sen brukar det finnas ett par möten, eh, antingen med andra parlamentariker eller med människor från den gröna gruppen eller ofta besök från intresseorganisationer. Vi har också förstås utskottsmöten. Det är när... Eh, Parlamentariker samlas tillsammans i ett rum för att diskutera frågor och föra omröstningar om, om frågor som berör olika delar av det europeiska politiska ansvaret. Europaparlamentet samlas förstås också i sin helhet. Så sättet beslutsprocessen funkar är vi får ett lagförslag eller en fråga som vi behandlar i utskotten. Beroende på vad frågan rör hamnar i olika utskott, så industriutskottet tar till exempel industrifrågor. Jordbruksutskottet tar jordbruksfrågor. Um, budgetkontrollutskottet hanterar saker som budgetredovisning och bokslut från de olika institutionerna. Uh, och ekonomiutskottet han, hanterar finansfrågor. Uh, när utskottet är färdigt med sin uh, hantering av frågan så skickar de en rapport för läsning av eh, den fulla församlingen, liksom plenum. Eh, det är när alla parlamentariker från alla utskott samlas i samma rum för att fatta beslut eh, och genomföra omröstningar om, om eh, förslaget. Och bara när, pleni, bara när hela församlingen har fattat beslut om en fråga har parlamentet färdigställt sin behandling av en viss fråga. For example, currently we are quite busy with uh, ACTA, which is the anti counterfeiting trade agreements um, that the European Parliament should vote um, on soon. So, yeah, this is an example of political files. So the ACTA debates have been going on for a very long time, since 2007 or so. They were very controversial even when they started. Um, civil society protested in during the entire negotiations that they had very bad access to the negotiators. They didn't know who had access to the negotiators or under what terms. Uh, it's also turned out later that actually the parties that did have access to the negotiations, predominantly large American corporations, were from the US and the EU in fact doesn't even have a strategy for including external agents in their trade negotiations. So there's been quite a lot of controversies around this particular agreement for a number of years. And particularly now, this spring, there was a very wide and kind of sustained citizen debate that stretched over the entire Union area. And this is very uncommon. Like, I think it hasn't actually happened before that all the member states have protested at the same time. Um, that citizens have taken up the same political issue to address it at the same time with their publicly elected representatives in the European Parliament. So this was really quite an extraordinary spring from a democratic perspective in the European Union.
four different committees of the European Parliament voted on their opinion um, to the main committee, the International Trade Agreement, uh, to say to him whether they would advise uh, the European Parliament to reject uh, or accept ACTA. <laughs> The way this victory was achieved uh, was uh, uh, not so sure, and uh, therefore we are very happy that uh, that this committee said no to ACTA. The Committee on International Trade rejected the agreement as being irresponsible and a bad strategy for the future. It's been rejected as being bad for developing countries, it's been rejected as being bad for fundamental rights. It is not the way forward for European industries and uh, it's also not um, a legally soundly constructed agreement. ACTA is a very fair contract. It blends all the for many sectors in the same contract. Man has always openly clicked on a sensitive point when man goes in and tells the European citizens that we need stronger enforcement and sanctions against material exchange from the same time as the Union is completely unfamiliar with fixing the most fundamental problem we have with fragmented exchange in the Union. This report from the International Trade Committee would be submitted uh, to be uh, voted by all the members of the European Parliament in Strasbourg and the first week of July. And it is only in the plenary votes in July that we can have the Parliament making its ultimate decision. So it's not over yet. Um, I'm very happy and I'm very proud that I was given the opportunity to uh, play a part in this process. But ultimately, it is um, it is the citizens' protest that made this possible, I guess.